Hey guys, it's Mr. Post, and uh, today's video will be examining a free falling object. That is when an object is falling and it's only under the influence of gravity, and there's no other forces acting on it. This falls in line with what we're studying these days of one dimensional kinematic motion, which is straight line motion. And when you think about an object such as a ball that is being dropped off of a building or something, the ball is going pretty much straight down. And so we're going to talk about straight line motion, which is still one-dimensional kinematics, but in this case, it's going downward only. Okay? The same way, we could also talk about a ball that is being thrown, but thrown upwards. And it goes up, hits the highest point, and then comes back down in the same exact path. Both those are examples of one-dimensional kinematic motion, straight line motion. Today, though, we're looking at simply a free-falling object. The example for today's lesson is going to be a ball is dropped from the top of a 73-meter tall building. And I want to know how fast, or what will the velocity be when it hits the ground. So let's check this out, guys. Let's look at the givens here. All right, once again, a ball is dropped from the top of a 73-meter tall building. Well, I have my displacement here. My displacement is 73.0 meters. Well, we all know that an acceleration is going to be negative 9.8 meters per second squared. That's the acceleration of gravity here on Earth. The initial velocity... Well, when you drop a ball, initially it's in your hand, and therefore it's going to be at rest, so therefore we're going to have a zero meters per second as our velocity. The question to ask is how fast will velocity be? So I'm looking for what is my final velocity? How fast will it be when it hits the ground? I'm going to put a question mark there. You're going to notice that time was not mentioned, and that's critical for us in this example here. Now the question is, which formula do we choose? We have four of the kinematic equations here. Do we use the first one, the second one, the third one, the fourth one? And although this can be a little bit overwhelming, you know, uh, the easy way to solve this is simply going back to the last slide. When we look at which variable was not even mentioned, and that's what we want to key in on here. Because if it's not mentioned, we cannot use any equation that, is, that this is referenced in. So time has not been mentioned. So let's go ahead and look to see which one of those formulas this time mentioned in. You see time is mentioned over here time is mentioned here, and time is mentioned here. That variable is not expressed at all in our, in our, our problem, so therefore we're going to remove it, we're going to take it away, and we're not going to use it in this equation here. All right, this problem is going to be solved by that formula right there, vf squared equals vi squared plus 2ad. So let's go back, guys, and plug the numbers into that formula. Let's begin by rewriting the uh, equation we chose on the other page. vf squared equals vi squared plus two times the acceleration times the displacement. And just bear in mind, guys, we are solving for the final velocity over here. And that's a VF squared, okay? So we're going to have to deal with some squares here at the very end, and that'll be okay for us, all right? So VF squared equals VI squared, and the initial velocity is right here, is zero. So that's going to be zero meters per second, and that's going to be squared, plus two times negative 9.8 meters per second squared times our displacement of 73.0 meters. Let's, let's continue on here guys. Vf squared is going to be equal to, well this is going to be zero. Zero plus two times nine point, negative 9.8. Let's get our calculators out and crunch these numbers here. And I went ahead and did the math and we ended up, end up having negative 19.6 meters per second squared multiplied by 73. So let's go ahead, guys, and take this one step further. The final velocity squared is going to be equal to, let's just multiply negative 19.6 by 73. And what I have right now is, after I crunch the numbers, Vf squared equals 1,430.8 meters squared per second squared. And we still have to finish off here. That's my velocity squared, my final velocity. Let's figure it off, uh, finish it off by doing the square root. Okay, so the final velocity is going to be the square root of 1,430.8 meters squared, second squared. All right, let's crunch that number, guys. And we end up having the final velocity to be equal to 37.8 meters per second. And in this case, it is a downward direction, and we're just going to have to put a negative in front of it. So what's your final velocity? The final velocity at impact when this ball hits the ground is negative 37.8 meters per second. Alright guys, hope that video was helpful. Have a good day.